basically these are our own collective notes about the day and uh, we just want to um, share them with you um, so that uh, basically it cements the memory and uh, you can also have the chance to correct uh, if anything that we that we missed out okay so we'll try to be as brief as possible so the morning Iman and Yuichi they talked about predicting network maintenance and the role of AI it was interesting to hear from Yuichi that for NTN, uh, NTT and Japan in particular, automation is not an option because there is so much of the workforce going to, into pension. And um, the view they provided uh, from the operator's perspective was an end-to-end -end view and the activities they were doing in various degrees of, uh, uh, of maturity, which is interesting to see compared to uh, what happened last year. So um, they showed proactive and reactive strategies, talking about different types of uh, of um, techniques, regression, classification, anomaly detection. And the idea is really to seek problem-solving templates. This is a sort of like a recurring team. What are the sort of like a, a main approaches that we can use to solve these types of problems? Um, they talked about different types of data sources, network layer, software layer, external, and different types of data to show that this is a really complex problem and there's uh, so much data that needs to be uh, uh, taken care of and, and understood to, to create this, uh, these templates. Um, one interesting uh, piece of trivia I found uh, I find great is like, every day a piece of equipment uh, creates 40 million lines of, of log. So the question is, where is the data explosion coming from? <laughs> it's from our own devices, which is, yeah, needs to be improved. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and there was also a great lear learning. Um, they managed to extract the abnormal log sequence, but then ultimately it was just a list of, uh, of, of numbers and it was not practical from the operational point of view because the network operator had to find the erroneous log ID, so very time, time consuming. And for this, they then went on to, the, uh, to using uh, clustering approaches. And it was also interesting to see a, one, a recurring team that we also saw um, uh, internally uh, at Cisco, the fact that you start with some, uh, some techniques and you get uh, lots of clusters. And then suddenly you see that, well, these clusters are all obvious. So you need to do more, do something more, be creative. The, uh, the state of the art, uh, algorithmic state of the art often does not uh, uh, cut, the, cut to the chase. Um, they solved this uh, through a transformation of the logs into a 3D sensor, uh, tensors and then feeding them in, in further cluster algorithms. And they also, uh, Yuchi also talked about the root cause analysis and how they built ca ca causal models uh, using random forests. Nicola then uh, talked about broadband uh, troubleshooting. And broadband, uh, despite being sort of like the old uh, way of accessing the network in the 5G world, it still made the main access for many uh, use cases. And um, in troubleshooting, we talk about prediction, diagnosis, optimization, and he focuses uh, specifically on the diagnosis of copper technologies. And it was um, a fascinating end-to-end uh, -end view going from how does the uh, uh, signal attenuate over the wire uh, for instance, because there is oxide on the uh, on the connector, to uh, data gathering, simulation, and uh, eventually deep learning uh, of convolutional neural networks to extract patterns on the frequency responses, and how then uh, they needed to bring in the definitions from the experts to actually make sense of this data, because there was no uh, trivial um, uh, mathematical representation of the of uh, how the uh, uh, the different uh, response curves the, um, would uh, fit one uh, to uh, the uh, uh, severity levels. Sorry. And, and also, this is one again, one of those uh, rather rare in the, uh, in the field uh, success stories where you can, where you can see, okay, uh, before deep learning and the, um, and, the, uh, and the expertise, we used heuristics and we had like a 50% success rate or something like that, which is basically chance. And through using deep learning, you augmented that, but you still were, yeah, not satisfactory. But then again, Putting in the the, uh, the expert uh, knowledge, you got it to a level of 95%, whatever, which is acceptable and it kind of fulfills the promise of uh, the deep learning uh, revolution. And there's also the um, 
the so, uh, societal uh, aspect of, of the fact that the technicians didn't like it at first, but then slowly <laughs> and without, but keep on pushing, basically after a year, they start looking themselves at the curves. So basically in a way, having a new tool, a new representation of the data helped them also getting into a new knowledge field. Uh, um, I love that part of the story. Uh, Laurent talked about self-driving networks. The fact that the internet is very resilient, had to sustain nuclear attacks, but not against misconfiguration of humans. And there are like between 50 and 80% of uh, internet failures are due to, uh, to humans. And part of the reason is that there is this semantic gap uh, between the intent and, and the low level codes. How do you translate these things? And, and a, a few years back, uh, the reprogrammability of network hardware uh, has created a paradigm shift. Um, however, going from uh, purely sort of manual networks to uh, automating uh, networks will not just like appear in instant. And the way Laurent is, is working on it is going level by level. And the current examples is uh, assistance in configuring and monitoring networks. Uh, one example he brought was NetComplete. You start from structures with selected objectives, for instance, for load balancing, and then predicting only specific parameters in this, in this structure. And another uh, example was about conditional and high automation, this is sort of like the further level of, uh, uh, of uh, autonomy. And he also talked about the uh, Net2Text, the chatbot for networking problems, really trying to make the, uh, the engineering parts more um, digestible for uh, the human brain. So really augmenting human operations, operators by bridging uh, this, this semantic gap. Um, Rebecca talked about making AI-driven network uh, infrastructure work. And she took it from really the, uh, the broad perspective fact that digitalization and the gadgets that we use every day, uh, which are part of the IoT, create massive amounts of data. And of course, networks need to improve to handle this data. And a part of the, uh, um, the discourse was also that, well, there are more and more data centers that are being built, but this in turn creates a problem for the environment because these, uh, these suckers consume a lot of energy. And a part of the reason is that uh, in general networks to create uh, sufficient or the necessary levels of, uh, of, um, of service are systematically over-provisioned. Uh, so we fill everything uh, to the top. And so there is a need for uh, practical design patterns to optimize whatever uh, capacities, capacities out there, which is not needed. And examples include yeah, a chain of different methods that will solve the problem, rule-based, combinatorial optimization, data-driven. So it's just, just not only uh, ML and data science. Again, the, uh, the, the thread of the expert that is needed in, in the loop to make sense of, uh, of what algorithms then are uh, best applied. Um, there are some uh, requirements uh, for networks, scale fast and act fast. And uh, uh, um, she also talked about uh, three paradigms which uh, are promising, federated learning, distributed learning, automated reasoning, security for AI models. Um, and she concluded with open data sets uh, which are uh, being developed um, because today they don't reflect yet the technolo technological advances. So we have uh, the SEACAED.org uh, and also the uh, Akumos and other uh, projects. So it's something that m uh, more than one organization is trying to, uh, to push forward. Um, we had then uh, the uh, interesting talk by Almerina and, uh, and Thomas. Uh, about the journey of adoption of network telemetry and big data analytics by Swisscom. So the devices do not know and cannot know the network. And so there needs to be an overlay on top of, uh, of the devices to make sense of, of the network itself. Um, Thomas repeated it again in the panel that unstructured data is not helpful to steer the network. And uh, they're working in uh, by preserving the schemas, uh, which enables then the automated closed loop operation. This is the uh, uh, the, the vision. Uh, it's important to compare the intent to the state of the network. This kind of reflected what uh, Laurent uh, was talking about. And uh, in, at Swisscom, uh, they take the uh, the approach of defining uh, very well the uh, the services. Uh, for instance, for distinguishing uh, good and bad uh, uh, packet drops. Uh, Merima talked about also the analytics that matter. So try to focus on, you can do so many things, but then what is really uh, bringing value to, uh, to the business uh, or simply to understanding what's going on. 
Um, talking about uh, time series forecast, uh, the, the traditional methods that were not reliable, and uh, the fact that the uncertainty measure on top of the forecast were very important. And then we had a demo of the DAISY tool, which was uh, very appreciated. Um, and the Yang model, of course, that's helping towards getting more structure into the, the data for configuration. And then we had uh, lunch and afternoon. Dimitri, I really liked his historical and numerical view of ML for networking. It's still a hard problem and needs new methods. Um, there are, it's having a transformative effect on three levels of applicativity, applicati, applicability, sorry, it's late. <laughs> Descriptive, predictive, and prescriptive. Uh, the fact I found interesting that, of course, the underlying model for descriptive predictive is data generated by stochastic model. Um, but then ultimately data in practice is not identically and in independently distributed. So there are coupling and relationships effect and it's heterogeneous, which leads to poor generalization, which is, uh, is key for, uh, for any model. And especially for forwarding and control, conventional ML methods are not directly reusable. So um, this le leads, uh, uh, led him to, uh, to push the boundaries in, uh, in neural networks. And there are a few challenges, well, there are many challenges to applying uh, neural networks for, to, the, to computer networks. The expressiveness, the, the efficiency, the training of convex functions, and the generalization, of course. Mm, uh, another key point about stationary um, signals and mixing assumptions uh, does not hold for network processes. Uh, importance of keeping models simple. And uh, I really liked also the, the how I presented neural networks for one side data analysis, but also used for machine learning. So it's, it's actually, it's true, it's two different pathways. And this is a, um, a, a great viewpoint. Um, so for forwarding and control in particular, the end-to-end -end view needs more fundamental breakthroughs um, due to the non-IID. And uh, ultimately, there is a key question, how to model the noise uh, in the networks? And this is definitely not a solved problem. And this is where, um, well, we need uh, more breakthroughs. And uh, yeah, this is, uh, this is very good. Andreas, uh, he talked about a data-driven approach to benchmarking. Uh, machine learning can be tricked by, through adversarial inputs, uh, but it's true for um, advanced networks, but also for old school uh, networks. There are challenges for modeling, lack of data, models not generalizing, human biases, and of course, the yeah, better approach often is, is data-driven. So the idea um, is to automatically generate adversarial inputs to find weak spots and security holes, and then eventually to, uh, to improve them. Um, he shared two examples, one finding network traffic configurations that maximize uh, CPU load, and uh, he showed that the performance models were not trivial. Uh, he used Bayesian optimization, and with a surprising result that send, for specific cases, sending less network uh, packets over time can lead to significantly higher CPUs, which is really counterintuitive. Second uh, example was uh, the use of genetic algorithms to find challenging flow input. And in general, um, I liked the, uh, uh, the, one of the conclusions that came out in the, in the Q&A uh, session was basically, well, there is a big configuration uh, space and we don't have adequate tools to explore this. Um, so we basically navigating blind in specific directions that uh, maybe are not, uh, not promising enough. So um, this is also something uh, interesting and worthwhile thinking about. Uh, Vishnu talked about uh, the proposed yeah, ITU uh, solutions to challenges in MI in ML in 5G. Uh, the International Telecommunication Standards uh, work starting in 2017 in the context of, of 5G. And they started with 30 plus use cases and they classified them and then uh, they detailed their requirements. It's an iterative process and now in the second round and he um, showed uh, three use case uh, examples. One was the ML Enhanced SON and the output that is expected were uh, param network parameters and settings, traffic classification and tagging. Another example was the ML en Enhanced Network Slicing um, slice of performance prediction, service design. I think these pointers are interesting for uh, researchers to uh, kind of know in which direction is worthwhile going. Although it's, uh, it's work that uh, it's being refined, it's interesting to see, okay, what are the problems and which, what do we expect? What is the vision for, for something that is useful as, a, as an output? So there's a move towards uh, uh, ML functional orchestration and integrating everything in a, in a complete framework. 
Um, they're also working on a marketplace, marketplace integration uh, from one trick to patterns, uh, from sender to cooperating, training in a, in a sandbox with real network data that is relevant, and having, of course, managed optimized benchmark uh, models. So there are uh, two big uh, opportunities to collaborate, uh, an AI challenge and student projects. We're done. Summary. <laughs> <laughs> So I have only three points. We did this also last year um, as a pilot, and um, but of course we've been following the uh, the, the field for uh, quite a number of years, and um, I definitely see the progress over the last few years much bigger. Last two three years there has been much more progress in AI networks than before. Even last year uh, we've seen much uh, more progress. Uh, things are are improving. Um, there are more pilots being successful and more projects going into production. And it's interesting to see that now suddenly a uh, lots of little problems, the real problems uh, kind of surface. Yeah, but how do you do this exactly? How do you apply in your networks to this specific problem? The year, years before, I remember three years ago, lots of talks were still about, okay, deep learning is this, this is a neural network, and this in general, these are cats and dogs. So this is basically gone now. We didn't have any of that. Uh, and this is very good because now we can uh, kind of get uh, finally to uh, to the meat of uh, of the problems. Also, how to combine the second point? How to combine network engineering uh, expertise with AI is slowly surfacing. We don't have the answer yet, but we had also discussion in in, in the panel. And there is a, there is a certain balance between removing the humans to <laughs> remove the errors, but also to maintain it. Where what do we what do we keep? What is our core expertise? What is the human good for? And um, this is uh, this is great uh, because uh, it also goes against all the the talk about AI re replacing humans. This will not happen. How can we augment humans? And and we heard some examples about where the humans will provide a, a value, a verification, algorithmic development, understanding the data, which implies that you need to know the vertical in which you're working it, and this doesn't come for free. Sometimes it's just uh, years of experience. And third point, big challenges still remain, and this is the call to action. Uh, need for new mathematical and numerical model methods. Uh, we need breakthroughs there, if there are any. They can come next year, maybe in five years, we don't know. But in the meantime, there's still lots of work uh, to be done. And, uh, and, I, and I feel that uh, there's also need for shared relevant data sets, sandboxes and methods. Um, the more we have that, the bigger the community, the more people can uh, basically stop reinventing the, the wheel. Um, um, the uh, deep learning uh, community had the breakthrough thanks in part to uh, the ImageNet dataset, and we don't have yet such a dataset. Maybe it's not relevant yet, but something like this should surface. And, and these three points to me um, uh, are the summary of, of today, and I would like to thank you very much for coming, and I also would like to invite my co-chairs uh, to the stage. and. Let them add something because I put this together during the panel, so it was uh, kind of stressful, and I hope it captured well sufficiently the uh, the day, and I hope you appreciate it. Yeah, I don't have more to add. It captures everything, and thanks a lot for joining uh, the track and for all the contribution. Yeah, I also joined Iman and Nicolas in thanking you for attending, and also all our speakers and panelists for their great inputs and. Uh, willingness to come. It's uh, not always uh, easy for everyone. So thanks for joining us in this, uh, this uh, adventure. And we'll come back to this uh, yeah. for the future. And if you found it interesting, um, the organizers of the conference will make the videos available if the uh, speakers agree to. So uh, if uh, you found something interesting and you want to show it to your colleague, you can show it the whole thing and not just uh, your filtered version. <laughs> <laughs> and um, Again, thank you very much. Yeah, Have a great you. day.